I'm feeling very delicate today. Once a month, every month, it's like the worst day of my life. <clears throat> oh dear. I'm up on those days where I do absolutely nothing. This is gonna be a really boring video. I'm very excited about this. I've needed this for three years. What do you think? These are the exact same as the glasses that I wear normally. These are my normal prescription glasses. And there's the shades version. I haven't had sunglasses for three years. I like them. I just wish that you can see my eyes through the lens, you see. I like it when they're a little bit more dark, but that'll do. Definitely helps with the hangover. That delivery man was really upset that I was filming him, but I think it was because he was uh, smoking in the work van. It's not my fault. All right, that's enough. I'm too hungover. I'll let me from tomorrow tell you some stuff to bulk this video out. All right, it's me from tomorrow here. Me from yesterday was being a complete wimp, so I'm gonna take over for a second, probably do a quick show and tell, and hopefully that will give this video some purpose. Without purpose, we would not exist. Just look at this mess. What a disaster. Check this thing out. You might have seen me using it in a few of the videos um, like back like at the start of like two weeks ago. This is my Craig jig. Craig is just the brand, but it is a pocket screw jig. That's what it is. There's a few different kinds of these, but they all do pretty much the exact same thing. This one tool has made me a lot of money. It was 80 pounds when I bought it, and I think I'd probably be somewhere in the region of 20 to 30,000 pounds, all thanks to this guy. So what this jig enables me to do is make these diagonal holes. And these diagonal holes are the basis for all of my cabinet construction. The reason I'm able to make so much money is because cabinets for kitchens and things have a really high markup value. The jig comes in three parts. So you get this piece, which clamps onto the piece of wood. You have this piece, which is the clamp. And finally the drill bit. This is the bit that actually drills the hole. Is that too obvious to say? I suppose it depends who's watching this video. This thing can be kind of complicated to work out when you're brand new to it, but once you've got it figured out and set, easy peasy every time. The way that it works is it has these measurements down the side. You see 13, 19, is it 25, 32, 38? And these numbers represent the thickness of the piece of the wood that you're using. For example, this piece of plywood is 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. Once the jig is set, you place it on top of your piece of wood and it has these little feet at the back here and they just touch up against the edge that you want to put the hole into. Then you're going to grab your clamp and slide it into that little slot on the top and underneath and squeeze the handle until it clicks into place. Finally, you're going to take this drill bit and you notice it has this collar right here. And this one is going to stop you from drilling your hole too deep. It goes in there and you can see it pokes out just enough to drill your hole. And voila, diagonal hole. Now the reason these are so good is because, well, let me just show you. So you can see here I've got one piece of wood with the two pocket holes drilled in it. And then I have another piece of wood that I want to screw together. So what I'm going to do is take my pocket screw. This is a special kind of screw. And I put it in this hole. These two pieces are connected together. Now the reason this pocket screw jig is so good is because it's drilling through the outside of the top piece and into the face of the bottom piece. Normally when you screw two pieces of wood together, you're gonna to put two screws in through the top and then into the end grain. Here's what that same test looks like, except for this time we're going through the face and into this end grain. There we go, there's the other sample. Can you tell the difference between these? Straight away, just by eye, I can see that the pocket hole sample, this one, is nice and square on the inside but the one where we went through the face and into the end grain is not square. And that's because the nature of the geometry, when this diagonal screw goes in, it pulls everything 90 degrees. When you do it this way, you're screwing it and it could be 
slightly on a wonk. See how that's not square? This is square, this is not square. In this case, I was lucky, but something else you can do is you can sometimes split the end grain when you do this kind of work. But because the pocket holes go into the face of the wood, you can't split this piece. Can you see right here, I have a little bulge where my screw didn't go in quite straight either. So much of woodworking is just making boxes on 90 degree joints, and this jig really helps take care of most of that work. This jig is a great way of joining together sheet materials in particular, so you can make cabinets very easily, and cabinets have a really good markup value. That just means that you can sell them for more money than you paid to make it. Using this jig, I've easily made probably over 30,000 pounds over the last sort of 10 years, just with this jig. Again, this one's from Craig but other brands are available. Uh, I don't know if this is really the best one on the market anymore. It's kind of expensive, I think, compared to the other ones. And I don't think they're any better, technically speaking. So maybe you're better off finding a cheaper brand, but this has served me well. I'm very happy with it. I have a few sets of this exact combination. It really doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist, a DIY dad, someone who wants to start doing it professionally. I really recommend that jig. That's it. I should also say there is a lot of haters for the pocket hole jig. You can ignore all those people, disregard it. They're great. My brother also came by to show off his drone. This is what that looks like. Drones are pretty cool, aren't they? I'll probably put some of that footage in later videos this week. Sprinkle it through, no one wants to see, uh, nobody wants to see like 10 minutes of drone footage. I'm so nearly done. You're nearly done? Yeah, literally. Like, two seconds. Two seconds. It's the evening time. Maya's making a video. You making a video? Kind of. Kind of. I'm editing uh, yesterday's video, which I'm a little bit behind on. Hangover. And also starting to edit uh, tomorrow's video to try and get back on track again. It's so easy to fall behind with this thing. But I think I'm good for it. I'm still going to be on time. I can catch it. You have to aim. Yeah. <laughs> so put your hands out. Hold it there, hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. It doesn't feel very balanced. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 